What up, Matt Wyatt here. Time to take a look at that Mississippi State win over Texas A&M. A few plays from the game, a few more than usual, and it's just because I thought you had plenty to look at offensively and defensively that were meaningful and impactful in the game. So here we go, film study. Bulldogs beat the Aggies. Let's take a look. Third and eight, swing around out of the backfield for Eris Williams, the running back. And it's to the three receiver side. Ball was in the middle of the hashes. Gets the blocks he needs, first down. Go back and look. Three guys have to block three because they've manned it underneath with a safety back here in the middle of the field. And so that means it's one on one on one for all those guys out there. The one that stands out to me is right here in the middle. And that's Dedrick Thomas, number two. He's five foot nine, 180 pounds. And the first guy, the most important because everybody else dropped a little bit. And you got to make eight yards back here to uh, get the first down. And he's catching it. Uh, well behind the original line of scrimmage. So this block, that first one, really important. And the 5'9 guy, he locks him up but stays underneath, does not let him go, and that's a really nice block. Not to mention you have two others who've blocked him to the inside to give your running back a lane out here to go make the first. And that was huge because it was the first third down of the ball game. They convert it with a swing pass. Same drive, another third and six. They're going to unblock the defensive end and read him in the zone. Quarterback keeps it. And then has to make he and a linebacker miss, turns into a big run. So you go back, look at the read, caught it this way on purpose where left tackle can get down easily with leverage on that um, three technique and unblock the defensive end. So now his eyes are on him, plays it pretty well. And with one step down that way, quarterback pulls it out and it's the right read. Problem is, linebacker lined up back there away from the strength and so they've got numbers. Now two on the edge. This is just a great individual effort. The original line of scrimmage, basically three yards away from Fitzgerald as he's got the football right here. And two defenders, one on his inside shoulder, one on his outside shoulder, standing at or inside the line of scrimmage. that he's somehow got a beat on third and six. One step to the inside. He's going to make the inside guy miss. Just the slightest bit of hesitation right there from the linebacker for whatever reason. A poor job there. Dives at his feet, and now it's all green. That is a 6'5", 235-pound ball carrier. Just made two guys miss at the line of scrimmage. Turns it into a big run. So again, 46, the end does a nice job to try to recover, but it's this defender on the next level that just uh, does a poor job. Job is outside contained, but now that he's going back, he just hesitates for whatever reason here, and that allows the quarterback to reel off the first down. And so to culminate that drive, the go route to Stephen Gidry, one-on-one, into the boundary, ball on the left hash, it's straight drop back, pro, stands in there, deliver it to the back pylon, receiver makes a great catch. A couple of things about this. First of all, watch the back, Eris Williams in protection. He's going to get... Nickel or linebacker coming off the edge to his side. And this is the thing where quarterback's putting his eyes over here to begin with because he knows he wants to come back to that one-on-one -on -one here on third down. But when he does, inevitably he's going to see someone coming off the edge. But he trusts that protection of that back, knows he's going to do a good job. And then don't just block him, but really pop him. Clean pocket, good throw. It's a good throw and even better catch. Airborne, secure the football, get a foot down, touchdown. Defense for Mississippi State forced a field goal early. Uh, back is going to bounce it. Middle linebacker Errol Thompson going to chase it to the outside and tackle for loss right here. A couple things going on I'll show you. First of all, you look at the front for our Mississippi State. Montez Sweat off the edge is going to get deep and take on the pulling guard. So they're pulling the right guard, 77, and the tight end, 81, to that side. Watch Sweat take on the guard and really pop him back into the lane. So you can see that happening right there. So that kind of muddies it up here for the vision of the back, which told him he wants to try to bounce it. That's one thing. The other thing is go back and watch Jeff and the way that he treats the left guard on this play. So... Kind of blurry, but that's him right there, taking on the left guard. Now watch him use his right arm and just basically throw him out of there. So the guard is supposed to take on Simmons one-on-one, -on -one, but he's now just been thrown into the block that's happening there. But 
even though you still have a tight end who's pulling, looking inside, and that should be blocked. He should block there, you're there, you're there, you're there. So the lane to run the football is there, and what's happening is the linebacker Thompson, who's in the middle and has responsibility for that gap, is guessing that it's going to bounce, and he's starting to chase it down. So right here in this instant, if he wanted to trust his tight end, he'd try to run by Jeffrey Simmons. But that's the thing. Simmons standing there in this gap with the tight end not there yet, and it's straight in the vision of the running back. Jeffrey Simmons is the reason. He sees it and immediately decides, I'm getting out of here. And because of the job that's being done in front of him, Errol Thompson, the linebacker, is just running to the football. He's not necessarily gap responsible here, but he sees this thing about the bounce. And a lot of it is because I think he senses he's just throwing his tackle down. He's got that you know, uh, taken care of. I'm going to the outside. And Thompson goes out and gets tackled for loss. Simmons and Sweat make it happen. So A&M tries to put the quarterback on the move and go throwback screen to the back into the boundary. Fake it to him, roll away, throw it back to him. First of all, that's Willie Gay beating the block of the lineman to force this thing back into his teammates. The other thing is keep your eyes on 94, Jeffrey Simmons, who's playing the nose guard, sees it go away from him. That's Willie Gay who forced it back. And now here's Simmons turning back and going to get the angle on the running back. That's a 300-pound nose guard. So the drive goes into the second quarter, and on third and goal, Jaquarius Landrews comes off the edge. He's unblocked because everybody's out in the route, gets to the QB. They call it intentional grounding. And television copy screaming and yelling about A&M leaving this man unblocked. But if you look at what State does and how they get it done, against this formation, they have four down linemen. And so it's like a 4-3 type defense. They have four down with their hands down. And what A&M has done is a single receiver into the boundary, and it's obviously man-to-man coverage across the board. So if it's man here, it's man everywhere else. And that means you're thinking, okay, well, who's got who? Well, that's, again, pretty obvious that it's man-to-man. There's a responsibility. He's got the tight end. And one of these other defenders does have the running back. It's all a man-to-man responsibility because they're sending five players these four to the play, to the wide side and the single in there all out in the route. If all your backs and receivers are out in the route, all you have for protection is five linemen. So that means if one, two, three, four come, you can block those. If five come, you can block those, but not if six come. And everybody in the world knows that. If I've got five-man protection, I cannot block all six guys that way because a quarterback's holding the football. So it's not a bust in protection. It's just an overload. And the quarterback didn't read it. Screens were really good to A&M. This time they catch them in a blitz. State brings four down linemen plus two linebackers. So State's bringing six on second and 10. And they call screen. It's a tunnel screen where instead of outside, it's designed to come back to the middle of the field. And you got it set up with three linemen out in front trying to chase it down from behind, and it's the only touchdown of the game for A&M. As the game went on, neither defense allowing the opposing offense to run the ball, hardly at all. So it came down to who could protect and throw the ball the best. Coming into the game, you would have thought that would have been A&M. Turned out, Mississippi State, Nick Fitzgerald, those receivers, pass pro for State was really good throughout the night and they've made more and more plays in that pass game as the game went on. State comes out in the third quarter, starts the quarter with an easy throw out here on a hitch route, a three-step drop, four receivers out, keep the back in, just make a nice throw on a hitch, get your confidence. So after a first down, they come back and go two-receiver route, keep the tight end and the back end so it's seven-man protect, stands in that pocket, plenty of time, strong throw on the comeback route. Look at a couple of things here. One, it's smart. You're going to throw the ball on first down. Keep that tight end in and the back. So now it's seven-man protection. The quarterback is confident standing back there. Why is that important? Well, look what AM does on this first and 10 play. They're dropping the end in zone coverage, bringing the middle linebacker to try to confuse your protection, and a safety that lined up back there on the hash 
who's flying down in there to come after you. When he realizes he's not going to get there, he holds up. Again, I think this is the effect of a running quarterback and him thinking, I'm not going to get through there. What he may do is try to escape here if he has to hang on to it once he sees pass. The other thing is if you look, the route got two guys open for a first down. He chose the comeback route to the outside, probably a safer throw away from anybody. Excellent route. Double move, get him turned. Let's go back and look at each move that Osiris Mitchell makes. Just as the corner starts to turn his hips and go cover the deep third, you give him one stutter, and now he's going to check up so that when he accelerates, now he's stopped again. You're going to give him one more little check up, and now you've got him completely beat because now he's turning. So you're one step ahead in the route, double move, nice route, excellent throw. So the way this drive ends, they're in a third and 11, third and long, throw the go route one-on-one against a soft corner, just run him down. One little pump fake, try to affect the corner, but it's an underthrow, and he comes back and gets a football. Now, it's just a three-man route. Everybody else stays in in protection. And if you look, they're trying to get that um, out route in the hash open for a first down. This is actually a great view of what you've heard called quarter-quarter half coverage. And what that is is the corner on one side is going to go deep and have a quarter of the field responsibility deep. A safety will also be deep and have another quarter of the field. But then you're going to have one deep safety whose responsibility is an entire half of a deep third, and that puts a hard corner underneath him on that side. So in this case, quarterback, because of that, is choosing to read the vertical and the out against soft corner, soft safety. What happens here, I think, it's just a theory, is as quarterback is reading to see the out route come open to the sideline, A&M has covered it nicely by running the flat defender underneath it because it is zone coverage. And so I think it's just instinct that he's looking right through it, sees the corner with his eyes inside, and wants to give his receiver a chance, and he puts it in the lights. Put it down there, DB overruns it, receiver comes back. Lots of depth on the defensive front for Mississippi State. A&M comes back, tries to zone it back this way. Watch that defensive tackle. That's Lee Autry, number 97, backup deep tackle. He's taking on that guard, going to get underneath him. You see how his helmet is underneath that of the lineman. He's got a little leverage there. Shed him and then penetrate to the ball carrier. Tackle for loss. And again, can't overstate what an excellent job this is by Autry. Look at him. He's underneath, and watch how he refuses. This lineman is going to get as low as he can get to try to get leverage, and look how Autry refuses to let him get underneath him. There's a lineman who's getting as low as he can, but Autry still kind of has the leverage and now sheds him and gets to the ball carrier. So this is the scramble play that turned into a huge play for Mississippi State. On third and 21, protection enough for him to step up and finds his guy late crossing. He's going to turn on the Jets and outrun a couple of guys, get it down inside the five. Needed to make one more miss right at the end or run through it. Couldn't quite do it. Just want to go back one more time, look at the protection on this. They're bringing four against seven-man protect. The tight end does a really nice job right here of turning out on that outside linebacker. Phillips left tackle in the game right there. Excellent job on the outside rush. And you've seen it before. Those guys can get upfield and deep all they want. But if everything is protected in front of that quarterback, where he can now step up here and escape, especially to his arm side, that's plenty good enough. And this is uh, a little scramble is what actually allows that to happen. And then the speed from Gidry, which everybody's kind of waited to get a chance to see. You've heard about he can really skate. Almost turns this into a touchdown. Excellent hustle by Cyrus Mitchell to try to get down here and help him into the end zone. Eight-point game, 240 left, fourth and goal for AM. and They're trying to get verticals to the wide side of the field in there. Errol Thompson, middle linebacker, going to drop into the throwing lane. Quarterback's been getting pressured, probably gets it out a little early here, but because of the outside rush, he doesn't step up but throws, thinks he's got a throwing lane here, but that backside defender Drops right into it, makes a pick. 
smart job to take a knee. And so again, there's Thompson in the middle of your screen, the linebacker spot. With fourth and goal, State defensively basically going to drop what is ultimately five defenders into the end zone, knowing on fourth and goal, that's where the throw's got to be. They're going to get it across the goal line. But the other part was safety staying in where, where he's supposed to be, uh, outside linebacker dropping in the throwing lane of the outside vertical. He's trying to force it into the inside vertical, and that's where you're able to step in the throwing lane and pick that off. Touchdown play to seal it for State. They're going to block those four defenders right there, and that's all they have to block because there's nobody back there to help it. So look how it happens. First up, tight end on the in man tackle, down on the tackle. Now you've got two Defenders coming to play the edge and the run off the edge. Pulling left guard, Daryl Williams picks up one. Pulling right guard, Deion Calhoun about to pick up the other. Meanwhile, these blocks are still engaged. And now you've got the lane. Clean there, clean there. That's as pretty as it gets. And go hit your head on the goalpost. And that was the ice. 28-13 final score. All right, hope you enjoyed that. A look at how it happened. Bulldogs uh, get that win at home over A&M. Nick Fitzgerald had a big game. Defense was outstanding. And several guys stepped up. So that's what's got to happen if you want to win in the SEC. Hope you enjoyed that. And if you did or you have a comment or question, let me know. Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter. I am Radio Wyatt. And then also Facebook and YouTube, all the video stuff. Just Matt Wyatt Media. So you all check it out. And also thanks to Renaissance Bank for sponsoring these videos. They love SEC football. That's obvious. So you all hit them up and let them know about it. Tell them thanks over at renaissancenation.com. Thanks for listening and watching. See you next time.